It finally happened. This was the episode we had all been waiting for in this series about one of the most beloved characters of all time. Obi-Wan Kenobi has had a rough season up until this point, with lots of strange writing and at times too convenient plot threads. That's not to say that it's been a bad series, because Obi-Wan Kenobi has definitely had some bright points. And of course, the brightest star has been Ewan McGregor as Obi-Wan Kenobi himself, and whenever the series goes off track to explore other characters, it just really hasn't hit home. However, Obi-Wan isn't the sole reason to why Episode 5 specifically was so amazing. Of course, the one who stars next to Ewan McGregor is none other than Hayden Christensen. Anakin Skywalker and Darth Vader himself. And in this episode, we finally see Hayden in his full 40-year-old glory, as both Obi-Wan and Darth Vader dream back to the past of better times, when they were still friends and brothers. Now, you're probably expecting me to say that just because we saw flashbacks that reminds us of the prequel movies, that this episode is suddenly better than all the other ones. And yes, while these scenes could be seen as a fan service on the surface, it's actually deeper than that. You see, the entire episode is basically a battle of strategy between Vader and Obi-Wan, as the Empire represents Vader's hatred and offensive nature, pushing against Obi-Wan's defensive style as he defends the people of Jabim. While there is a bigger picture here of saving as many people as he can and returning Leia to her father and mother, we constantly see both Obi-Wan and Vader remembering their duels against each other, firstly to gain the upper hand but even seemingly out of sentimentality. And as we see them fluidly dueling each other back on Coruscant, we also see something take place that we haven't seen in previous episodes in this series. We see the growth of Anakin into Darth Vader. You see, in previous episodes and heck, even in other Star Wars media and even in the films themselves, there was always this disconnect between Anakin and Darth Vader. Sure, we saw his transformation into the most powerful dark side user to ever exist in The Revenge of the Sith, but whenever James Earl Jones spoke, it just felt like a completely different person, which it technically was. Where is Padme? Is she safe? Is she alright? As much as I think that George Lucas tried his best at showing Anakin's actual transformation into Darth Vader, me and many others just never saw Anakin's face under that mask. We just saw the mask. We just saw Darth Vader, the Dark Lord of the Empire we were first introduced to in A New Hope. And I think this is especially true for fans who saw the old trilogy before the prequel films. And this is an issue that this episode seems to have fixed for me. Whenever we see the flashbacks with Anakin and Obi-Wan sparring, the attention to detail is incredible. Yes, they could have used a bit more money to de-age Hayden a little bit more, but it really wasn't that necessary. What was necessary was making you feel a connection between Anakin and Darth Vader. To make you feel that, ah, yes, this is the very same person, I can finally see him under that mask. Heck, it even feels like they made him taller when standing next to Obi-Wan, which again reinforces that you can see his stature behind his black suit. The broad shoulders, the powerful build, it's all there. And it also helps that Hayden really showed us that he can conjure up that anger as we see his face contort into one of rage and confidence as he overpowers his master. In the end, yes, we really do get to see just how powerful Vader is when he's really angry as he stops one of the fleeing ships mid-air, pulls it down and rips it to shreds in a similar manner to how he almost destroyed the Inquisitor Fortress in the game Jedi Fallen Order while chasing after Cal Kestis. Finally, the chef's kiss mwah, to end it all is just how easily he toyed with Reva, a character that many disliked from the start, but who has grown on me personally after seeing just how powerless she was against Vader. I even felt sorry for her, and I really hope she turns to help Obi-Wan in the final episode. Or who knows, maybe she gets found by Cal Kestis. All in all, this was Anakin's episode. This was Vader's episode. I finally see Anakin and Darth Vader as the same person. And I finally got to see just how powerful Anakin was when Obi-Wan didn't have the high ground anymore. And I have to commend the cast and crew of Obi-Wan Kenobi for making that happen. 
and of course Ewan McGregor and Hayden Christensen. Anyway, let me know what you thought of this episode in the comments below. And as always, have a great day. I'm out.